you just close the door, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Max, can you close the door, please? Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. Um, this show is Claire's fourth uh, solo show here with Solomon. And I'm so pleased we're having it in February, uh, after the dark, long winter, to have these beautifully, the no, exhilaratingly colourful paintings. They're so joyful, they give me such pleasure already. And they've only been hanging for, what, 36 hours. Uh, it just really makes me feel good about moving into spring and rebirth and all of that. And obviously, um, we are delighted to have two guests this evening. Uh, first of all, we have um, Dr. Keith Gaynor, who is the Assistant Professor in the School of Psychology in UCD. He's also a member of the Clinical Psychology Training Program, and he's also a regular contr contributor to uh, radio shows. So he's been on uh, Ryan Toberty quite a bit, and also um, contributed to the very popular um, Living Room Logic podcast. And I know that Clea, through her kind of recent journey, um, has found a lot of what Keith says very interesting and quite appropriate to her work. So um, I'm really pleased to say this work seems to me like a, a rebirth or it, it's so joyful, but I'm really dying to hear what Keith's take is on it, uh, coming from the psychologist or the clinical side. Um, and then afterwards, we're delighted to have um, Steve Wickham, who probably doesn't need any introduction at all. So um, one of Ireland's foremost musicians, um, previously been to Inua and obviously the Water Boys, um, and is really incredible uh, violinist. So he's been working with Claire recently on um, a new film project. And after Keith has finished uh, speaking, uh, Steve is going to give us a, a kind of a, his sort of interpretation of the paintings as well through uh, some music. So um, I'll just shut up now. <laughs> keep, keep going. So thanks, thanks again. Sarah, for coming. Hi, my name is Keith Gaynor. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist, and it turns out that I'm Claire's favourite internet psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dubious recommendation, until I told someone that it could have been worse, it could have been Jordan Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm genuinely honoured to speak at Claire's exhibition. I'm shocked, surprised, but deeply touched to be asked to say a few words. And occasions like these are joyous opportunities. They're an opportunity to come and celebrate something which is so amazing. And I was lucky enough to come in at maybe five to six or so, and I was the only person here practically. And just the colour and explosion and joy and energy that was in the room from Clea's work. And so I have two things I'd like to do. One is to soak it all in. Just to see a mass of extraordinary art like this in one place is an extraordinary experience. But then also for each of us as a group, to connect with that. And there's something about communicating with that individually, but connecting as a group, I think, is even more powerful. We live in a world which reveres intellect. To be thought of as the smartest is a great compliment. We, the CA, we, you know, we cherish the CAO points and the CEO, and we, you know, the person who wins the prizes and the science uh, prizes and so on. In parallel, as a society, we often neglect emotion. And while we might be pleased if our teacher told us that our child was the smartest in the class, if our teacher told us the child had the most feelings in the class, they don't really mean it as a compliment. And so if a friend suggests we should go on a blind date, and so he has the biggest feelings, <laughs> actually that might put us off. <laughs> Yet to feel is a human universal. There isn't a person in this room who doesn't feel and feel all the time. No one was ever born who didn't feel. And yet, we're taught from very early on to package it, to tidy it up, to present it in tidy, neat little packages. Sometimes to protect ourselves, but more often to protect other people, that they don't necessarily want to be bothered with our feelings. And this subtle message often boils down to a simplistic philosophy of stoicism good, emotionality bad. But we internalize this message resulting in a complex relationship with our own emotions. The part of us that feels is often pushed down or ignored, and the part that thinks is often praised. Emotion is left to the realm of the artist. They are the diviners who channel deep within us and reflect back to us our own experiences. 
we go to concerts and plays and galleries to feel. Experiences, she is the conduit from our heads to our hearts. Mental health has been an explicit theme of Claire's work in recent years, and there's nothing unusual about an artist having difficulties with mental health. What's important is the explicitness. It strikes out the stigma, the silence, and shame in which the history of mental health is shrouded. In the same way, we are not meant to feel too much, we are not meant to have difficulties with our feelings. It's okay to break our leg, just not to feel too upset about it. <laughs> Yet no art is created in a flattened state. The gift of the artist is to use their profound skill to dis distill that dysregulated tumble of emotion that bubble bubbles into the confines of the page, the frame, the form. Until, like a bottle of the purest putchine, we can all taste it off. We often hold the perspective that our emotions are our own experiences, our responsibility. But there are very strong reasons to think otherwise. We feel in relationship to other people. If one person laughs, everybody laughs. If one person feels upset, often we feel upset with them. Or we have to harden ourselves not to, be felt, not to feel it or be overcome by it. One of the reasons society is so negative about emotion is because emotion is so powerful and we actually want to keep it at arm's length. The philosopher Martin Buber once described it as, I am intrinsically you are. The human being is intrinsically oriented to other human beings. In the same way a compass is oriented to the north, human beings are oriented to each other. For better or worse, the happiest we feel, the saddest we feel, the most joyous we feel, is with and because of other people. When we think of the tiniest baby, our first act is to connect with another human being. Before talking, before walking, or anything else, they are reaching out Connection is severed, they are devastated. They experience a grief beyond grief, a grief that will last a lifetime. Our emotional lives, which seem so secret and deep inside of us, are a web of living energy, a profound connection to every person that we meet. In the words of Dr. Keltner, a collective effervescence. And in the most wonderful way, that is what Kaya has created here a collective effervescence, work that is deeply personal to her drawing from the spectacular breath of her own imagination and imbued with her own deepest emotion. And in that, in that act of communicating her most internal self, she creates a collective tingle, a silver thread running through each person in this room. Her emotional expression becomes our emotional experience. So I'll end now on two emotions. One is a deep gratitude to Kaya for creating this work. And the other is an emotion called Kirgo is a Hebrew word, and it means a genuine delight or pride in another person's achievement. And so, on behalf of everyone here, and the people who will view your work in the future, I want to say thank you. You've never done this in, a, in a, an exhibition before. So, well, you can play or not play. You can play whatever you want to do. But I think it might be fun if I'm going to play for about four and a half minutes. If you can look at the paintings and go through the paintings as the music is going. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But that's what I'm going to be doing. Don't look at me. <laughs> and it's such an honor to play for Cleo. Cleo was my neighbor for years at the Modern Club. <laughs>